That's the sound of Jamie McDowell's brand new single, Tori, from her upcoming third album, Extraordinary Girl. She was signed to EMI at the age of 16, becoming a household name across the nation. Her debut album went gold and received three New Zealand Music Award nominations, winning Best Pop Album of 2013. Welcome to the cafe, Jamie McDowell! Oh. Jamie, it's so good to see you. It's been so, so long. So good to see you guys. Uh, you can tell your story in just a bit, okay. right? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a good story. And first of all, Jamie, you apparently wrote your first song, now let me get this right, at the age of seven on a boat in the Mediterranean. Is that right? 100% <laughs> correct. Oh wow. my yeah. goodness. How, how was that first song? It was good. It was all right. It was, now that I look back, it was actually a rip of the Flipper. Do you remember that movie? Yeah. The Dolphin movie, the, the theme? <laughs> yeah. And then I just wrote lyrics to it. But. That still was a full song, but I, you know, yeah. we'll claim. And then a few years later, da da! <laughs> yes, how did you get noticed by the record company? Because I guess that's every singer's dream, isn't it? Get noticed and then yeah. get a contract. How did that happen for you? It was kind of a whole bundle of things. At the time, um, YouTube was becoming quite a thing for young artists to get themselves out there. So I'd started doing videos like that, which were getting views. Um, I'd sent a CD into the record label. I had some family members that were kind of keen to help push me along. So quite a lot of support as well in that sense. Um, so a few, few different things and all the stars sort of aligned. I can remember, because I was at um, The Breeze at the time, and I can remember you coming in and you literally 16 year old and you just sat there with your guitar and played there must have been about I don't know six of us yeah. must have been the most nerve-wracking thing was daunting. ever. I, that has stuck in my memory and I think because I'd I just it was the first time I'd really started playing a lot in front of people and I didn't realize that you have to tune your guitar after every time you play <laughs> so it was wildly out of tune I remember one of you guys saying oh nice voice but next time <laughs> maybe you should tune up now, I remember it vividly because I was just like oh my goodness this girl's only 16 and you were you were divine and, oh, and obviously you. that's why you've gone on to go great places yeah, yeah. No, and, you know, just a great personality and a great attitude as well probably just came straight off the beach after rescuing somebody as well because that's another <laughs> string to a bow um, okay so this album Extraordinary Girl recorded in Nashville. So yeah. how long were you there for? Tell us about that experience. Well, initially I'd taken a sort of a month-long trip to Nashville because lots of people had said to me, you should get over there. They knew I was a lot more interested in sort of country and Americana music and that's the home of it. Um, and I, I ran into a producer that I really uh, aligned with, a really chill Aussie guy actually, much like myself, called Nash Chambers, and we figured um, it'd be cool to record a record together. So actually the whole album was recorded in two days. Wow. So it's, it's very much, I mean, it's pretty much a live record. Nice. Um, but I like that sort that. of that stays true to, I guess, the way the songs were written. They're all very sort of raw and organic, and didn't make sense to overdo the production. Because it's a very competitive market in Nashville, isn't it? To even get the opportunity to do something like that mm. must have been pretty cool. Yeah, I think it is. It is. But there are also a lot more people there, I suppose, compared to New Zealand, that are in interested in the likes of sort of country and blues roots music. So it was almost like I felt more comfortable there because I was around people that kind of understood my John Denver references and things like that. So it was it was cool. Yeah, it's great way and, to push myself. And I guess. Um, are you proud of this album? Because number three, you know, they say number two is really hard. Number yeah. three, are you proud of it? What do you think of it? Yeah, I am. It's, it has been like a bit of a journey getting here. This is also for me one of my first um, independent releases. So it just means that basically I've been working on everything from the ground up myself. Um, so I suppose the process has been, well, it's had my hands on it so much. So I am really proud of it. So you did the cover? You did everything, did you? Is that yeah, what yeah. Well, I did. I actually, I did a degree in graphic design, and about the only thing I've really been able to use it for is like <laughs> <laughs> um, doing album covers and things. Various and awesome pieces. Facebook yeah. posts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Which is like a big deal now. Yes, no, you're right. No, so right. I want to go back to John Denver because um, one of my favourite artists as well. I think you're probably a bigger fan of John Denver than I am, though. I what influence so. in his life has he had? Well, it's it's it was basically you mentioned before. I spent a lot of my childhood aboard a yacht growing up, and I think it just so happened that the only tapes we had aboard were John, John Denver, Denver and also Jimmy Buffett. And so, for me, probably till I was about the age of ten, that was the music that I figured everyone else liked too. <laughs> <laughs> so that was 
kind of where my um, interest in songwriting came from. Yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, I'm not the Spice Girls. You, you know, you don't yeah, listen. Yeah, I, like, I mean, no, I John eventually Denver. got there, but <laughs> even, even then, like, I really, I don't know what it was. I would always go back to those artists and just feel like they, like, I've always said this thing in my head that, you know, if, if John's looking down on me and he's proud of what I've been writing, then it's okay. <laughs> now, I have heard you sing Tori. It sounded beautiful, but I was wondering, who is Tori? Well, yeah, the song actually does come um, from a true story. Tori is a real person. Um, she was part of my partner's past relationship life. I'm actually really down to earth girl, so I couldn't have thought of anyone more appropriate to write a song about. Um, so but hang on, your partner's ex. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> OK. <laughs> right. To put it lightly. Yeah, yeah, that's the truth. But yeah, it's, it's sort of the whole theme is around um, how, how often your first loves affect you throughout your relationships to come. Oh, yeah, you've got to stick around here. It was incredible. And um, did you do that with Casey Chambers? Yes, yes. It's been a huge thing for me. So Nash Chambers, who produced the record, is, is her brother, and that's sort of how the connection happened. But she is, I mean, she's, what, onto her 12th record, I think? Wow. And she's just a complete uh, legend. So that was huge for we me. We cannot wait to hear that at the end of the show. Thank you so much. And Jamie's latest album, Extraordinary Girl, will be released on Friday the 4th of May. You can catch her on tour, too, in Auckland, Whangarei, Christchurch. Church Hamilton um, in May and June. Check out her Facebook page, which she's very good at, um, <laughs> for details. Now, Jamie Singletory is out now, and we can't wait for her to perform it. <laughs>